Good morning, everybody. Orin Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and this week in Global, we are getting access to Renan, our next Warrior of the Crystal unit, 100 cost, Lightning unit, and if you've been looking forward to this guy, I think, like our other Warrior of the Crystal units, you are not going to be disappointed in Renan. He's going to bring a bunch of damage to your team. He's going to bring some uh, very specific tankiness to your squad as well. In fact, this guy is just going to be really tanky in general. So let's take a peek at him. Let's see if he's somebody you want to go for, or if he's somebody that you can pass over, maybe pick up on another Warrior of the Crystals banner while you save up for Final Fantasy VI, Persona 5, those cool collaborations that we know are coming down the train. Okay, coming down the train, that's a new one. Anyway, let's compare Renan to our conveniently located other 100 cost lightning mage, Anibara. Now, Abara, when she came out, I think a lot of people weren't super excited for her. They thought she'd underperform, and she, I think she's proven them wrong, right? Lightning is a cool element where you throw, like, Charlotte and two huge damage dealers out there, maybe like Abara Cloud, and run people over. And I think Renan is going to fit nicely into that group. Let's compare their stats. Now, Abara is very tanky for a mage, and she's actually bringing 400 more HP than Renan is. He makes up for that with some skills in his kit that we'll look at later, but Abara gets the nod there. Now, Renan gets the nod in magic and agility. He's got 522 base magic to her 493 and two more agility than she does. Speed, especially when we're talking about Renan plus his TMR, is a big deal for this guy. He's a little south of her in the luck department, which could hurt his accuracy, but he's bringing a 100% hit ability in one of his sub jobs. Abara doesn't have access to that. Um, he has six spirit to her four, but she has four defense to his zero. Renan is going to be very, very good, especially against magic based teams. Um, a bar is tanky against kind of everybody. Okay, resist. Renan is bringing 20 slash resist. That is a big deal. A bar is a minus five. And even against magic teams, a lot of them have Starlight Elena or somebody with like a hazard slash in there. You need to be able to resist slashing. It's an important, um, it's an important resist to have. He brings a big number. He sucks, however, against Pierce, whereas Ibarra is very good against Pierce. Both of them are resistant to Missile, both suck against Strike, and both are pretty resistant to Magic. So that's pretty cool. Okay, we need to do a little bit more digging here, though. Let's take a little bit closer look at his kit. We're going to go to Wode of Calc for a second. Uh, let's start with his TMR. Is this something worth getting just for its own sake? I don't know, but I can tell you it's going to be very good on mages. Check out the stat line first, 302 HP with 8 defense and 6 spirit. Not bad, just a little bit of a defensive TMR as far as the stats go. It's equipable by most of your mages, not Ibarra. Notice she is not on that list, but basically most all of your mages can equip this. The skill is where it's at on this, on this TMR. It is a 3 turn steroid, 40% magic. 42% haste. It only has one cast, so in something like a Guild Wars, it's only going to be fight one, but a 40% magic boost with haste is really nice if you're just trying to run another team over, which a lot of times is what Lightning is aiming to do. Really good for him, and if you're running him with a Barra, since she can't wear this, it makes the building a little easier because you just put your, like, Re-Raise or Black Rose Helena TMR on her. You could give Renan this, and I think you'd be set. Now, there's a lot more to say. We need to look at his skills, right? What does this guy actually do? Okay, the story becomes clear really quick. First of all, Spirit Penetration here, and I'm going to skip straight to the bottom and look at his Limit Break real fast because there's more Spirit Penetration down there. If he casts his Limit Break, right, it gives him 40 Spirit Penetration for 3 turns, does big damage in an AoE. This is a skill that AI is going to like to use, and it's a skill I think you'll like to use in manual play if you're doing that, because that 40 Spirit Pin will really unlock his damage. You combine that with Gorai's Magic right here, which is another 40 Spirit Pin, and with just one ability use that's an offensive attack ability, Renan could be sitting at 80 Spirit Penetration. Really, really nice. It also gives him 12 spirit with this support ability. So you can start seeing how he's kind of an anti-magic person with a lot of spirit pin. Um, if you want more spirit, if you want to get even tankier against magic teams, you have two options. One of them is Blessing of the Water Spirit. It's just 12 more spirit and water resist. Look, if you're purposefully hunting water teams, which good luck finding them in global right now, 
Blessing of the Water Spirit is awesome. If you want defense and spirit, you have access to 15 is 15 of both, but you're trading that for a minus 20 in magic attack, which might be a might be a trade a lot of people aren't willing to take. You could alternatively go for a more magic, like 30% more magic, or reduced activation time. If we go back to his master ability here, you can see he has the um, lightning buffs, right? But his master ability is really focused on reduced activation time and tankiness. Okay, so he's a mage who's going to be pretty tanky and have quick casting spells. So far, so good. I think you always run Gorai's magic and then you mix in the other one based on what you need. Counter abilities. Think Yuna, think, uh, think a auto cure thing right here, right? Basically, you have two options. You have two of them that are exactly the same, it looks to me. You have chance to counter all damage 20% and heal yourself for 120. You have that twice, anti-healing and breath of thunder, which is really interesting. Or you have a 20% chance to reduce all damage by 30%. So, do you want to be a little bit tankier? Do you want an auto heal? I personally probably like the auto heal a little better, especially on a magic based unit. Okay, if we go down, let's study his main job. New main job, what's he got? So his basic, um, his basic ability, the cheap AP one with a lot of cast, is a magic resistance debuff for three turns on the target and a little bit of damage. This could be good in some PvE situations as well when you're fighting those bosses that you want to lower their magic resist on. Okay, then area of lightning that upgrades to area of thunder Kai. Here is his first like big ticket buff that we're going to look at. This is a missile resistance buff for three turns for target. So take that, Jaden. You already have a ton of spirit on this guy. He also has access to a missile resist buff. And as somebody who runs Joom Winter Luartha a lot, Winter Luartha's missile resist buff on a tank is particularly effective at hunting down those magic based light Jaden teams. So that's pretty cool. Um, it also is a spirit buff. 35 spirit for three turns at EX and the EX upgrades the AOE into an easier to hit your whole group with AOE buff because it's the whole square now. This is an amazing buff. It's something you're going to want to build around. Let him cast this early. A plus right there. Great buff. Okay. Then he has lightning's blessing. This is a shield. Oh wait. This is, yeah. This is a shield. All damage, magic and physical. 50% three turns for self. So right here, just these two moves, these are two amazing TP moves. You're going to want him to get these cast in every fight. What TMR are you going to run? Like, it's going to be hard to get a TMR on this guy that you actually want him to use unless you're willing to sacrifice one of these buffs. So that's something to keep in mind, and it might be a little bit of a knock on his own TMR if you're going to run it on him, because... A 50% shield. Yeah, I know there's a lot of shield busting in the game right now. You are still making the enemy team pop that shield, which could make them not cast a higher damage ability. I think it's worth it getting the shield on almost every time. Okay, let's keep going. Um, sheet and Seal, which upgrades the Sheet and Seal Kai. This is a barrier break. So speaking of shield busters, he has one himself. It also is counter attack off and 200% damage. It is single target, it is range four. This is a really good skill. So if you're hitting somebody, you break their barrier, they can't counter you, boom, that's nice. And then Naragami Rainbow, uh, probably different name in global. This is a 220% big AOE hit that has a chance of inflicting confusion for three turns. So remember, like if you played for a long time, Agrius used to be like super meta and she would start so many fights off with landing a big AOE confuse on there on your team Hers was only a straight line, but it was still something that really sucked to deal with if you're fighting these Renan teams, this is not on his limit break, so it's going to have a lower percent chance of hitting, but he's a very high spirit unit, which boosts that chance. And if you're fighting against mages, it'll be further boosted by your enemy's high spirit. Confusion might be back in the game a little bit. That's what I'm saying. This might be, you might be getting confused some. And then his job level 25 ability, War 10 Thunder. This is a dispel, ignore fatal damage. So it removes the courage buff and then 165% damage in a smaller AOE. So he has access to that, but it does smaller damage. However, the AI might choose to use this to take courage off of a unit. In his unique sub job, he has a really cool 
a TP debuff right here. Might be difficult to get the AI to use this, but it could be really useful in manual play. It is a silence and slow on the enemy target, AOE, three cast, TP skill. Then he can also dispel protect and shell. So if you're fighting like a Joom, if you're fighting wind teams or um, teams that you anticipate protect and shell, you might want to run this sub job for this skill to knock those really powerful buffs off an enemy tank. Okay, Kodadama Wielder. Why would you run this? Has 100% hit chance in it. That's, that's the big one right here. Um, if you just are worried about getting dodged, you do have access to a 100% hit ability. That can be important. Okay, if we go down, he also has Guru. Now, this is not called Guru in English. This is Minwoo's job, right? I want to talk about one thing specifically here. It gives him access to more buffs. I said one thing, two things. More buffs, if you want them, and healing. Okay, what is his AI going to be like? I imagine he has a very offensive focused AI, which means the healing probably wouldn't be something that kicked in until maybe like a fight two in Guild Wars. But if you do get it to kick in, if you have like a low HP Charlotte going into fight two, he might hit her with this amazing heal, right? Law of Livelihood here, 210% heal that is an agility attack and magic buff. This is a super powerful move. I just don't know how his AI is going to be with using it. We'll have to test it out, see if running this sub job is worth it. Um, for the buffs and for the healing. So no, he does have a note that he has access to this. It's going to be pretty cool. And boom, there you go. There's your preview for Renan. So is this somebody that you should pull for? Look, I think if you are a lightning player, if you're somebody who just loves running a bar of Charlotte something, you have an option here to run a double mage lightning team. They're both going to be very, very strictly magic based damage, which is a problem potentially, right? If we go through his kit here, magic, 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 all of his damage is magic based. So with somebody like a Bara, at least she's bringing slash. So you have a couple options there. If you don't have a bar, but you have Cloud in Charlotte, I think that's another good option. He could potentially replace what a Bara is in the very powerful Cloud Char Abara groups you see going around right now. Or you could just run three Super Lightning DPS units and just truck people. I think you're not going to be disappointed if you want to go for him. Um, I don't see a reason here to dissuade people who've been looking forward to him. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. I will be doing some polls. I don't know how deep I'm going to go. Kind of depends on what my uh, monthly budget and luck looks like. But if you are going to pull for him, good luck. Good luck. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.